Thanks Keeps for sponsoring this video. This is a disposable charcoal grill. Now I love charcoal and when I saw this I had to give it a try. So I went ahead and quickly opened it up. One of the things I could tell you immediately was the smell. They're definitely using some lighter fluid. And hopefully this is going to be fantastic, which opens up possibilities for everyone to give it a try, as this is the cheapest grill in the world. So today we'll be putting it to the test with several different steaks. Some are not going to be expensive, but one will. And I want to see how this grill is going to handle it. So to begin our very first steak is going to be this one, a nice beautiful skirt steak. This is the perfect steak to give it a try with that grill. It's extremely thin, so we're gonna need direct grilling, which is the only thing that this grill can do. To season it, I kept it real simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Once I was done, this steak is now ready. And here's our second one, a filet mignon. Direct grilling this is challenging for any grill, especially of how thick it is. So to ensure success, I'm gonna be splitting it in half. And when I sliced it open, take a look. Two beautiful steaks. To season it, I kept it real simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Once it was nicely seasoned, it was now ready. The first thing I needed to do was to find somewhere to put the grill. And if you're using a disposable grill, make sure you are putting it on a safe place. When I lay down the legs, it is not stable at all. For that, I just used a baking tray. Then it was time to light it up. Since it's full of lighting fluid, it was no problem at all. But is it gonna cook good? Well, we're about to find out. Because the first thing I needed to do is to let that lighting fluid burn off. If you don't do this, it's gonna be a horrible experience. You really wanna let it burn until your charcoals are no longer fully black. Because once that was done, I placed my skirt steak right in the middle, followed by the two filet mignon on the edges. When I put my hand over the top of the charcoal, I can hold it for no longer than eight seconds. That tells me that it's not that hot. But cooking these steaks, it's look like it's working. However, it's taking some time. And whenever you direct grilling it, you want it a little bit hotter than this. So the key here for me was to keep flipping the steak until I reach an internal temperature of a 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, we are even getting a nice little crust. At the same time, once I was done, take a look. A nicely charred skirt steak, which is actually presentable. But what about the filet mignons? This was a completely different story. Since the grill is not that hot, putting it in the edges really took a toll on it. But I did not want it to overcook it to keep it a fair comparison. So once the internal temperature of 135 was reached, I took it off. And here is what I was left with. Three steaks, one which looks really, really nice. The filet mignon just look sorry, but I'm curious to find out how they are gonna taste. And for that, we gotta slice it up. And when I did, wow, nice and juicy, medium rare, just the way I like it. Because take a look at the filet mignon. It's nicely cooked, tender, and I'm also curious to find out if it's gonna be good or bad. Well, we'll find out real shortly. Because just in case these steaks are gonna turn out terrible, I decided to make an incredible side dish for us today. And this one is an explosion of flavors. To make it, it's super easy and here's how. The first thing to do is to wash some potatoes and cut them the same exact size. Next thing to do is to get them cooked. So I went ahead and grabbed a tray with a parchment paper and put them in there. Got them seasoned just a little bit. Some salt followed by freshly ground black pepper is good enough. Then into the oven they go at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes. Because the next thing to do is to make some filling. And for this one I started with a little bit of butter first. Then I threw in some hand followed by garlic. Mixed it well and cooked it for about two minutes. I kept it under medium heat. Then I added a little bit of oil purpose flour then mix it well. You really want to cook the flour a little bit. This will help thicken our sauce. Talking about that, the next thing to add was a little bit of milk. To thicken it up, all you gotta do is to bring the heat high and stir it. To finish it off, I just add a little bit of salt followed by nutmeg. Mix it well once again and that is our sauce. Nice and easy, as by this time my potatoes were fully cooked. As you can see, the skin got nice and crunchy. So now I went ahead and grabbed the paring knife and started to remove the middle. With a spoon, it made it easy to pull it out. As to finish it up, I added that beautiful sauce we just made, followed by some grated mozzarella cheese, one raw egg yolk, and a little bit more of that sauce. Because the only thing left to do now is to put it in the broiler in the highest setting for about 5 minutes. As once the time is up, I took it out, added a little bit of chives right on top, and this is today's side dish. It's just heavenly everybody and it's gonna be fantastic to go along with some steaks talking about that we still got one more to cook and for that i'm going all out this is a japanese wagyu a5 picanha the best and greatest piece of steak that i've ever put it in my mouth this is as good as it gets and even though i know the disposable grill will probably cook it i'm really hoping that this is not gonna get messed up by it 
But if he does, at least it will be me, not you. To get it seasoned, I kept it real simple. A little bit of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper. That's it. You don't want to go crazy with a beautiful piece of meat like this. As now it was time to go outside and cook it. After letting all of the charcoal get nice and white, I placed my picanha. And I'll be honest with you, this was sad. Whenever I cook a Japanese Wagyu A5, everyone always says one thing. It doesn't matter where you cook it, it's always going to be great. Even though I disagree with this statement, this meat is as good as it gets. And if this grill can cook this meat, then I can recommend it to everyone to give it a try. But as you can see, I kept cooking it non-stop. I kept flipping it as many times as necessary. And little by little, I started to get a crust. However, the grill is way too small and honestly not that easy to work with. Because once I was done, take a look. Maybe the world's first Japanese Wagyu A5 picanha cooked on a disposable grill. It is difficult for me to watch that the steak does not have an even crust. But hey, that's what you get with a disposable grill. The only thing left was to slice it open and see what we got. And as I did, take a look. It's still medium rare and I'm only hoping that it tastes really good. Because now that we have everything ready, the only thing left to do is to find out how it all tastes. Does that look good or what? And before we try it, I want to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. Yes, yes, I know what you're going to say. It is too late for me. But it is not too late for you, my brothers. Keep that hairline. You see, two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. However, with Keeps, you can keep your hair. Keeps offers clinically proven research back treatment to stop hair loss and improve hair loss. Treatment plans are doctor recommended and delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of traditional pharmacy. You get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists that will give you 24-7 care and support. They will establish a routine that works for you. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps got you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Foods or click the link on the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Foods. Thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get right back to it. All right, everybody, here we got our beautiful feast today, gentlemen, huh? Almost. What do you mean, almost? It looks like you boiled down in the middle. Are you complaining about my crust? Nah. Bro, my crust looks amazing. Wait, you made this? Yes. <laughs> I need to go back to grilling school. <laughs> We have three steaks here. We're not testing which steak is better. We're just testing if any of them taste weird or if it just tastes amazing. We got a skirt steak, we got a filet mignon, and we got a Japanese Wagyu A5 picanha. Oh man, I am excited now. And then I got two side dishes here. This one will just be extra. This is just really the side dish right here. With all that being said, I say enough talking. Let's give this a go and give you guys an honest opinion. We'll start this direction. Please dig in. Strong smell of charcoal on this. That's not a bad thing though. Even though it's cooked perfectly, I'm curious to find out the taste. Enough talking, let's give this a go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. That was pretty good. That's strong charcoal. Yeah. Strong charcoal flavor, but amazing. I enjoyed that. I really like this steak a lot. I do agree that it does have a powerful charcoal flavor on it, but even though it does taste a lot like charcoal, it doesn't have that same pronounced charcoal crust that I am used to. I'm loving it. I just like McDonald's over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, not normally what I'm used to, but it tastes very nice. I really enjoy this steak, okay? It's so full of charcoal flavor, but if you go a little bit more, it would be so bad. It would be overpowering. It would be so bad. If it had just a little bit more, it would be horrible. What you're saying is it's a little bit less than too much. It is a little bit less than too much, yeah. It's right there where it's like at the limit. But it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it worked really well. It actually rendered the fat properly. The guys are going for second. This was a very nice, successful cook on that specific steak. Now, let's go for your uh, boiled filet mignon, like you said, <laughs> sir. Let's give it a go for the filet mignon and give you guys an honest review. Oh, this one smells like charcoal as well. Well, let's give you guys an honest review. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ooh, that's, oh. that's too much. That's what it is. It's way too. Mm. Oh my god. Oh, and Jesus. <laughs> this is bad. How I'm about to cry right now. If this picanha tastes like that, you're going to see many tears coming out of my. I don't know what you did to this steak, but whatever it is, it is so powerful that it completely changes the flavor of the steak. That's not good. That's not what you're supposed to do to filet mignon. It is not a wonderful taste. As a matter of fact, let's be real. It is terrible. It's bad. It's, I, it's a failure. It almost tastes chemically. I say before we try the picanha, let's clean our palate with this wonderful side dish, yes? This is very needed right now. Okay, very good. Okay, dig in here. 
here. Oh, oh, man, it's got running yolk. Oh, let's go. That's right. There's a little bit of egg yolk there. We got a little bechamel, which is your favorite sauce. Oh, I do like my bechamel. Together with some potatoes and to finish it off, some mozzarella cheese and ham. Oh, man, this sounds like it's going to clean that filet mignon right up. Enough talking because my gooey egg is flowing. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, let's give it a try. Cheers. Oh, wow. man. That is so creamy. That's a 10 out of 10 will highly recommend. Oh. I've completely forgot about the filet mignon and I'm just enjoying <laughs> these beautiful flavors. The yolk of the egg and the bechamel combine together and make something even better. It's so delicious. The potato is perfect. A little crispy on the outside. Wow. The ham is a nice touch. Google's wow. been killing it on the side dish. Oh, wow, I must say everybody, the <laughs> little egg yolk like this, everybody, is just Heaven. That's nice. I'm a little bit nervous right now about this pitaya. Me too. You too? If it's anything like that, filet mignon. Oh man. We have something to be worried about. Enough talking, let's give it a go. Okay. Dig in. Yeah. Feels kind of rough. Yeah. It feels kind of rough for an A5, right? <laughs> let's give this a go. All right. Cheers, cheers everybody. Mmm. Are you sure this is Wagyu? That's tough. I'm still chewing. It has a weird texture that I'm not used to, especially for an A5, everybody. It did something weird to this thing here. That's yes. not preferable. No. It's so different than a, a normal A5. It is so soft to the touch that as soon as it hits your tongue, it immediately starts melting. Yeah. But this one, you don't get that effect at all. You very much have to chew it. Don't get me wrong, everybody. This tastes amazing. It's got good flavor. You know it's a Wagyu because it's just extremely rich. Yes, I agree. But it's chewy. I think that even though it got overcooked, it was because it was sitting down on that grill for too long. By the way, I use a disposable grill to cook all of these steaks. And they had a lot of lighted fluid stuff. You use a disposable grill to cook Wagyu? Literally the most expensive cut of meat you got. But to answer the question, did it work? Yeah. It worked. It Is worked it? on the skirt steak. Is it the best? No. no. No, definitely not. Very far from the best. Do we recommend it? Yeah. Hell no. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was informative to you. If it was, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in any of the equipment I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay,